back to engineering nature this is mehul your guide for ansys fluent tutorial as uh, you know that i had started new uh, lecture series for the beginners that is all about uh, introduction to fluent so i already posted uh, the very first part which covered a very general setup at the same time a few model that is multiphase model now this is the second part in that series so after a multiphase and energy model uh, uh, we need to discuss about the the viscous part that is uh, see uh, in the case of a viscous model uh, once you open that viscous model we have uh, this window will appear where from laminar to there are several different models is appeared so laminar you aware that uh, if the flow is laminar simply you select that laminar but if flow is not laminar then you should go with uh, the available options from single equation to multi equations so let me show you that uh, what the difference between this single model to multi model uh, equation if it is a, a turbulent flow so in the turbulence modeling uh, normally it calculate the fluctuation of velocity when there is a turbulence flow there is a continuous fluctu fluctuations of the velocity normally uh, at any point uh, the velocity uh, can be uh, given by average velocity and the fluctuated term that summation will give the velocity at any instant so that is called as instantaneous velocity but normally it is very difficult to calculate this uh, uh, a fluctuation of the velocity that is why normally instead of calculating that uh, we have certain model which will give the facility to take the average out of this velocity that is called as a time average velocity so majority of the models are actually uh, based on that uh, philosophy so this is called as a rans based model that is a reynolds average navier-stokes equation so this single equation as well as two equations model that is including k epsilon k omega and <coughs> a reynolds stress model they are basically uh, the rans based model which will just average out of the velocity and which will uh, there is no issue with that actually uh, we uh, there is not always need to calculate this fluctuation of velocity but yes there is a certain application where uh, you required to capture this detailing part the detailing of fluctuated velocity then you have to go with the complex model that is uh, that is des detached eddy simulation model at the same time large eddy simulation model so by using that des or les you are capable to uh, calculate or capable to simulate the very uh, minor detail of uh, uh, the velocity fluctuations and then the flow pattern is also uh, uh, very different like like this so uh, but yes as uh, you uh, uh, increase the complication in the turbulence modeling your computational time is also increasing so nor normally the rans based model particularly k epsilon or k omega is sufficiently work for us and uh, with k omega we have uh, see now this, this uh, in this k epsilon and k omega normally k omega is uh, perform better near the wall and k epsilon is perform better at the center part or away from the wall but uh, uh, with the k omega assist uh, there is a, a, a very good compromise or very good combination where you can actually get the uh, a good flow result near the wall at the same time uh, far away from the wall so with this so uh, this information i think uh, sufficient uh, to give you brief understanding about the viscous model where uh, you can actually have some more sub options where you can have uh, even uh, with uh, k epsilon with the near wall treatment you just enable the standard wall function so it can also perform better there is no issue with that so this is all about uh, uh, like a viscous model for just basic understanding then after viscous we have a uh, next uh, that is what about the radiation model now uh, let me show you where uh, we can have a radiation so very first question when uh, we should consider the radiation heat transfer generally uh, when you are uh, 
radiation heat transfer is uh, significant as compared to conduction or convection heat transfer then only you have to go with this model. Now uh, before go to this model uh, you need to decide uh, your optical thickness. So this optical thickness can be calculated with this equations where A is the absorption coefficient that sigma is scattering coefficient and L is the mean beam length. This will uh, prim preliminary you have to do the exercise and then find out the optical thickness. Based on optical thickness it is uh, very good uh, to decide um, which radiation model is actually perform better for you. There is I, I mentioned that there is several model is available with us in the fluent there is a surface to surface model S to S when the optical thickness is zero this will perform best. Then uh, we have uh, Roseland as well as P1, DO and DTRM. Normally this Roseland is uh, you can you should uh, use when your optical thickness is greater than 5 p1 is uh, for greater than 1 if you are not aware about this uh, optical thickness and you are unable to calculate then calculate that thickness then you should directly uh, go with the do or dtrm model generally do or that is a discrete ordinance model and a discrete transfer method is most accurate one and you can go with that without any doubt. So uh, there are some other factor also which can actually helping you to decide uh, your model selections. So these are the Roseland uh, P1 model where you can define the number of band. Then we have a discrete transfer model where uh, we can actually some constants is available in the surface to surface you can actually have some settings for the view factor calculations then a discrete ordinance model where also you can have certain coefficient and constants is available you can modify that new one is monte carlo method also is available in the fluent so this is all about radiation model apart from radiation you can also calculate the solar load uh, by using uh, the solar ray tracking approach you can actually calculate the solar radiation by using this you can actually calculate the solar load calculation where you can set the number of days uh, year and all that inputs and through which you can actually calculate the solar load in the radiations part then we have a heat exchanger if we are actually dealing with heat exchanger you can actually uh, use this heat exchanger model where uh, there are three options is available which is dedicated to uh, for heat exchanger problem. Now very important is species transport equations or species model. This is generally used when the combustions or there is a chemical kinematics involved. So it's very complex but uh, yes very useful model when you are dealing with combustions. So species transport model basically uh, solving additional uh, equations apart from continuity and momentum equations. So in the species transport normally we have options available that is non premix and premix. Let me show you that first. So in uh, reacting or combustion uh, phenomena we have a two different uh, normally three different cases either it is having a non premix reaction where fuel and uh, air is actually uh, not priorly mix they are mixing inside the reactor so it's a case of non premix if we have a situation where fuel air mixture is already prepared before it will enter to the combustion chamber then it's a premix reaction case sometimes uh, we also having partial uh, premix system so based on that we have a different models same way we also having two uh, different category that is the fast chemistry uh, which uh, that fast chemistry is actually governed by finite rate or eddy dissipation model and then finite rate chemistry that is also uh, available in the uh, options. Uh, this combustion model is actually calculate the temperature normally temperature distribution due to the chemical reactions and heat release due to that fuel. Now the second part of this uh, reacting flow is uh, pollutions pol formation of pollutions normally fluent can uh, actually capable to calculate NOx formations, soot formations as well as SOx formations. So there are sub models is available uh, for that. Uh, I have detailed uh, tutorial already posted for 
uh, non premix as well as premix uh, combinations and at the same times uh, emission for emission also i had posted for methane air mixture uh, uh, the how to calculate nox emission soot particles and sox formations so you can uh, uh, also visit that tutorial to understand this combustion model completely and the reaction flow completely so what i have shown that non premix premix and partial premix model is available with us that is generally we use uh, currently i am actually unable the multi phase flow so this premix cannot uh, i cannot set any parameter for premix and partial premix so uh, uh, we uh, you can actually better to uh, solve that tutorial so uh, you will have confidence about this uh, species transport model so after species transport we have a discrete phase uh, model which allow you to inject the liquid particle and calculate the breakup of that liquid particle so normally uh, you should enable the interaction with continuous phase and then you can actually uh, track the unsteady uh, phenomena of that liquid breakup that particle breakup so this model this discrete phase model is kind of uh, it, it's generally based on blob injection method and normally you have to uh, set the parameter for injection so below uh, here also you have a injection setup let me show you that you just uh, click on the injection you have to create the injection parameter once you click on the create uh, the window will show you uh, the various options where you can de define your injection parameter you set the name you can actually set the type of injection there is single surface group plane orifice and there there are different types of injections is available based on that you can put the inputs uh the your particle might be in a droplet or maybe for evaporation it's a combustion particle combustion combusting particle you can set the material uh you can set the geometry uh, mass flow rate injection flow rate at the same time starting and stopping of injection of liquid normally uh, the breakup is governed by drag force so you have to activate that drag law there are four to five uh, breakup mechanism is available in the fluent you can actually uh, set that you can also select the discrete random walk model to incorporate the turbulence effect so uh, you can also uh, there is a uh, there is already i had posted tutorial regarding this pre simulation so you can actually uh, uh, practice that tutorial to understanding this uh, discrete phase model so i stop here and i will continue with the next part where we will discuss more about the the remaining model as well as how to select the material about the boundary condition and all other general setup then we will proceed for the solution and uh, controls so uh, stay tuned with this channel uh, thank you very much for your continuous support thank you very much goodbye